So welcome, everybody. I'm really glad you could make it in this uh, unusual time that we live where gatherings are not encouraged. So thank you for showing up. I appreciate it. Looking forward to the Q&A with Sunim tonight. Zen, for me, is the heart-mind pinnacle of Buddhism. Zen is beyond looking at the scriptures and the teachings and intellectual understanding. It is direct experience. Direct experience of what? Of our lives just the way they are actually right now. What we tend to do in many spiritual circles is put a head on top of our head that's looking for something when the head we already have has everything we need, including the body, the spirit, the mind. So in Zen, we talk about you know, waking up to our original nature. That's different than pursuing and looking for and trying to find some answer that will give us what it is we think we want, whether it's happiness, a good job, beautiful new car, something that we think completes us and makes us full and um, not so disenchanted with our lives. So our ordinary lives, just the way they are, means paying attention to those little things that we ignore all the time and don't look at because we're so busy chasing things out there. So Zen brings us back one thought facing in and looking at what is this sitting right here? Who is this that's sitting right here? Zen is also for me recognizing that we are not our thoughts. That can be a very scary thing. The good thing about that is it raises the question, if I'm not my thoughts, what am I? What's my connection to this? What is my life all about? Most of the time people come to Zen because there's some, some sort of big question in their mind that comes about from their experience, from their own suffering or loss or just, you know, not understanding why life, it, life is the way it is. Why is there so much suffering? Why do we treat each other the way we do? Why is there so much violence? You know, why is the earth struggling to survive under our influence? All those questions start with going in and understanding our own nature, what motivates us, why we think the way we do, what we hope to accomplish by pursuing whatever it is that we're pursuing. So heart-mind is clear like space. There's no place to go. It's already all there. So in Zen, we're not trying to achieve something, get somewhere. We're just trying to be present to what is already here, what is, just the way it is. And so, yeah, there's expedient means, there's techniques. We meditate. You, know, you might do koan practice. Um, and all these are, are ways for us to wake up to what's already here. So there's really not any place to go. There's just stopping believing in the mirage that you've constructed out of your ideas of what life is, which is the delusion, which is not real. The sky, beautiful sunsets, the most mysterious, wondrous thing in the world most of the time, we don't even notice it. We're so preoccupied in our thinking, thinking, emoting about, s stressing about whatever is going on, 
and yet we don't see our connection to the very nature of life. Every breath is a connection to everything. We share this breath. The whole planet shares the breath. So this sounds so simple. It's so simple that we overlook it. So Zen brings us back to what it is we overlook, which is the very essence of who we are and our own lives and how we live it. How are we being? So it's possible to see through, not attach to, and just let all the rising and falling of our concerns and thoughts be as they may and act appropriately, coming from a place of understanding of what's really going on, rather than some mirage that we've created or was created for us. So, you know, today it's really hard to discern using our intellect what is true and what is not. It probably always was <laughs> impossible to see what's true with the intellect. But I think there were other times on the planet where we were a lot less complicated and um, lived more simple lives. And perhaps the opportunities for us to have a peaceful, tranquil relationship with our environment was more available to us. Today, I don't think many people even notice nature, that they're living in nature, not in a car, not in a city, but in nature. Underneath everything that we see, hear, taste, touch, smell is nature. And what is this nature? Zen is a way of asking the big questions. You know, what is this? What's going on here? Why is it like this? Zen is also getting to know ourselves, and by getting to know ourselves, we resolve these issues that I'm talking about. So there's no place to go. Just be who we are right here and now. I'd like to turn it over to Sunim. And um, I know he's going to have some great dharma to share with us. So I really appreciate him being here. And I hope you will ask many good questions. So thank you.